Chapter 6, The Bamboo Grove. Quote, Ouch. Tara shrieked with a sudden intense pain. She was so preoccupied with the scenic view that she did not notice how wildly she had been scratching her arms. After having taken in the picturesque setup, she looked down to see that her hands were full of swollen red rashes. It took Tara one second to realize that it was the work of a pea-sized tiny brown scorpion, which was still sitting on her right arm. She yelled once more and brushed it off with her left arm. As the sleigh flew high up in the sky toward the east, Tara was mesmerized by the enchanting beauty of the land of Naga and Garuda. The vast expanse of snow-covered land stretched out before her like a pristine white lotus, pure and unsullied. The ever-flowing river underneath and the rolling mountain range clad in a snowy white suit brought forth a sense of peace and calm in her heart. The land of Naga was demarcated into eight regions. Each region was ruled by one of the eight dragon kings, Dragon King Nanda, Dragon King Upananda Dragon King Sagara, Dragon King Vasaki, Dragon King Takshaka, Dragon King Anavatapta, Dragon King Manasvan, and Dragon King Apalaka. Dragon King Sagara was the dragon king in the east. He was also the king of the dragon kings among the eight dragon kings. Bo decided to bring the dragon babies to the dragon king Sagara of the east. The dragons were the guardians of the water bodies. Wherever there was water, they would act as dragon guardian spirits. All types of water bodies such as rains, rivers, streams, wells, lakes, waterfalls, ponds, and the oceans were their domain. As the sleigh continued to move from north to the east, the season changed from winter to spring. Although awestruck by this sudden change, Tara welcomed the refreshing air scented with the mild sweetness of roses, lilies, and peonies. Before they were about to enter the territory of the Dragon Palace in the east, the icy gray sky became darker in hue. Tara was slightly jolted in the sleigh by flashes of lightning and reverberating thunders. Torrential rain poured down like a maelstrom of avalanche pummeling the flying sleighs mercilessly. Hold on to the handrail and sit tight. Bo said as he struggled to maneuver the sleigh and lead the rest of the pack safely. Okay. Tara was terrified, as the sleigh ride became incredibly bumpy. With the seat belt fastened, she closed her eyes and held Coco tightly, bracing herself for the tough journey ahead. The jerky movements of the sleighs were no fun for the children either. The shrieking children felt dizzy and disoriented. Those with motion sickness succumbed to nausea and vomited. Fortunately, the inclement weather was temporary. Soon, sunlight pierced through the heavy clouds, casting its illuminating rays upon the sleighs. Having made it through the thunderstorm, they were about to arrive at the Dragon Palace. Every Dragon Palace had three levels, the sky, the land, and the ocean. Bo brought the children to the Dragon Palace of the East located in the sky. The Dragon Palace was a gorgeous maroon and is gracefully floated on an enormous island of magnolia white clouds. It sported curving roofs and overhanging eaves, reminiscent of the imperial architecture in ancient China. Bo made his unicorn sleigh invisible and stopped at a little distance away, allowing the children to move on to the Dragon Palace. Once they arrived at the palace, Bo telepathically informed the guards to open the gate for the dragon babies. Surprised to see the lost dragon babies' arrival, the guards immediately guided the children into the palace. Tara was moved to tears seeing the children finally reach home and reunite with their families. She secretly hoped for a reunion with her loved ones too. For now, she could only cherish this heartening moment with Bo and Coco. Spellbound by the enchanting beauty of the land of Naga, Tara's heart was leaping with a frisson of joy. The purplish azure sky, the turquoise green rivers, the rainbow colored mountain, and the golden brown soil were such a picturesque view to behold. It was truly a pleasure and privilege to enjoy nature's beauty from a bird's eye view. Ouch! Tara shrieked with a sudden intense pain. She was so preoccupied with the scenic view that she did not notice how wildly she had been scratching her arms. After having taken in the picturesque setup, she looked down to see that her hands were full of swollen red rashes. It took Tara one second to realize that it was the work of a pea sized tiny brown scorpion, which was still sitting on her right arm. She yelled once more and brushed it off with her left arm. Wheezing and trying to take painful gasps of air, Tara's head started spinning. Her lips and tongue were swelling, and her mouth was foaming white froth before she lost consciousness. The next moment, Tara went berserk. 
Her eyes became bloodshot and her arms were flailing about uncontrollably. Bo remained calm and sober. After a second's thought, he cast a spell to empower the white unicorn to fly more swiftly, so that he could find a suitable dwelling place for Terra's healing. Then he placed one hand on her crown and another hand on her navel, uttering. Tayada um bikanze bikanze maha bikanze radza samyagate svaha. May the medicine king of the lapis lazuli light heal Terra completely. An invisible force held Terra to the bench of the sleigh, stopping her uncontrolled flailing. Bo continued to channel the healing energy into Terra to facilitate the purging of the lethal toxins from her body. Within minutes, Terra spat out a clump of black gooey ooze. Many bruises still scattered across Terra's arms and legs even after most of the toxin had been eliminated from her body. There was an especially dark bruise in the middle of her forehead. The bruises were an indication that the poison had penetrated her brain and many of the internal organs. Even though her life was no longer at stake, it would take her quite some time to fully recover. It turned out that it was not just the scorpion that resulted in Tara's allergic reaction. Instead, it was the lethal combination of dog flea seated on Coco's outer skin, bites of the scorpion, and mosquito bites. The fleas were attracted to Tara's fell human odor when she hugged Coco, and they jumped over to her body. Coco was no longer its joyful self. Instead, it sat down quietly, knowing that Tara was ill and waiting for her to recover. The smooth ride ended suddenly when the white unicorn made an abrupt turn into a secluded place called the Nook of Naga. There was a dainty waterfall that flowed into the river which eventually ended up in the ocean. The left side of the waterfall was taken over by a bamboo grove, while a mango grove spread across the right side. The sleigh landed on an empty space in the middle of the bamboo grove. Immediately Bo transformed the sleigh into a quaint Japanese Zen hermitage. Tara was sleeping on the bench of the sleigh, which was transformed into a comfortable futon in the bedroom of Zen hermitage. On one corner, there was an ikebana under a hanging scroll with calligraphy. A delightful sandalwood scent wafted from the three-legged bronze incense burner in the other corner. The bedroom was separated from the rest of the hermitage by a translucent screen on a black lattice frame. A cast-iron kettle was suspended over a hearth in the middle of the living room, and Coco was lying nearby to keep itself warm. In another corner that was closer to the door, Bo was seated in meditation next to a bonsai. His meditation channeled the flowing energy force of the environment into Tara's body to promote her healing. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy the novel. Terra Zinora and the Seven Jeweled Lighthouse is available for purchase on Amazon Kindle and Kobo. We have two more novels in the pipeline to form a trilogy, Terra Zinora and the Pyramid of Cubane, as well as Terra Zinora and the Lord of the Light Harvester. Do follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to YouTube and Spotify to enjoy listening to the entire novel. Have fun and see